When I reflect on my trading journey, there are a few significant milestones that stand out. In 2020, I experienced the exhilaration of making $100 in a single day for the first time. This was followed by another milestone in 2021 when I achieved the feat of making 1000 in a day. However, it's essential to note that despite these achievements, I was actually not a consistently profitable trader during those years. This is unbiased trading, and these are the four lessons from my first four-figure day. Now, why was I not a consistently profitable trader if I was able to make a thousand in a day? Well, it actually took nearly four years of dedicated effort, but I can proudly say that I have now achieved the point where I have made a thousand in a single day without putting my entire trading account at risk. Along this journey, I've gained valuable insights and learned some crucial lessons, which I'd like to share. So here are four lessons that I hope you can learn from. First, focus on edge above everything else. Before developing a strategy with an edge, I dedicated more than a year to just understanding the psychological aspects of trading. It is important to not be misled by the excessive focus on psychology during your initial year as a trader. While psychology is undoubtedly an important part of trading, it is not the primary factor you need to fix to become profitable. Edge is. Ideally, have something simplistic in nature at the start, like an open to close system, just to focus on building up the skill of execution on a system while also investigating and backtesting other new ideas and paying down your ignorance debt. Second, every trader is unique. Mentors can offer valuable insights into various trading methods, but it's crucial to experiment and discover what works best for you. Focus on identifying your strengths and weaknesses just because a particular strategy works for someone else doesn't mean it will be suitable for you. Embrace your individuality as a trader. I think this is really, really important because not every strategy is going to work for your risk tolerance or maybe even your execution speed or what you're best at. So for me, I knew I was, you know, I was okay with data. I have done a degree that's been adjointed with statistics and just generally um, had a coding background ever since I was a kid. Not specifically in finance or in trading, but I, you know, I knew the kind of logic of how to create code and I've kind of been able to slowly translate that into trading. So for me, what, what I saw at the beginning was, okay, I spent about a year and a half, almost two years, uh, just focusing on discretion. Um, and I was just ter terribly bad at discretion. I just didn't pick it up very quickly. It wasn't something that was naturally gifted to me or anything like that, really. Uh, and I realized, okay, well, if I'm going to get good at discretion, it's probably going to take me, you know, four, maybe five years because you need a big sample size from being discretionary as a trader. So let's say you're taking one trade a day. So that's about uh, 200 and something. I think it's like 225 uh, trading days in a year or 222. So that's 222 trades that you've taken in a single year. Now, that sounds like a good amount, but realistically, you're not going to remember every single one. If you're doing journaling, then maybe you will, but it's going to take you at least... I would say three to four years to have a big enough sample size of your discretionary trades to know what's working, what doesn't work. And obviously that whole time the market is changing, there's different environments, maybe some things will start working better for you, but then you won't know why they stopped, things like that. Um, and a lot of that creates a very big need for experience. Uh, and obviously when you're first starting out, you, you don't have any of that experience and it's going to take time to build up. So I realized for me, systematic trading at the beginning made a lot more sense, or at least the pivot to systematic trading because it was something I could focus on, try and build a statistical edge, you know, pull, you know, thousands of tickers or whatever I needed for that particular strategy to analyze how it's performed historically. Uh, then obviously I learned about robustness testing and out of sample testing, Monte Carlos, um, and actually what makes a robust strategy. And it's not always just what the best strategy is. Um, and you learn those along the way. Like, you know, my first back test was definitely not as good as they are now. Uh, they've improved a lot at the beginning i was making you know simple mistakes like maybe not even commute uh including slippage or forgetting that potential trades may not be able to actually fill at these levels or uh the scarcity of short locates and all those kind of things so um you learn a lot as you start but i would just say for me i wish i had started systematic trading earlier and really been aware that my strength was more in that realm rather than discretionary trading third doing work that is useful in the past, I wasted excessive time on activities, activities that had minimal impact on my profitability. It is vital to prioritize essential tasks, such as backtesting, whether you prefer the subjective approach or the data-driven analysis approach, make sure you focus on what truly matters. Personally, I prefer systematic approaches backed by data, but every trader has their own preferences. Try and create a list of what directly impacts your profit and your bottom line and what activities can get you closer to being profitable uh, either the quickest or it can compound the most. Uh, I think this is a really important mindset. Um, 
if you have ever, you know, run any kind of small business or you maybe run a very big business, uh, we all know you have to identify a bottleneck in a business. And in trading, there is, you know, it's, it's still apparent in the trading world as I try and use my trading career as a business. Uh, and every business will have a bottleneck that you'll have to identify first, which is actually quite hard. It's not always that easy to identify um, because I'll give you a quick example. Um, let's say in trading, you're suffering from blowups every once in a while. Well, you know, obviously you could just be like, oh, I, I like, I like discipline. This is why I'm blowing up after 20 trades. Okay, cool. That may actually be the answer, but uh, what can you actually do to just fix discipline? There is no direct correlation there to just fix discipline. Uh, so it doesn't actually allow you to move the wheel closer and closer. And in business, there's a lot of things like that. You'll just say, oh, I just need more clients or I just need more people to view my website. Um, that doesn't just happen. You, there needs to be actual activities you're taking, which will allow you to compound or move closer to that goal. So if you say I'm lacking discipline, well, I would actually want to first, and this is something I've had to do myself, is, okay, am I blowing up because the system starts to stop working and I'm getting frustrated and that's causing a more emotional damage, which causes me to blow up? Is that the reason? Uh, is the blow actually just because of the system itself? Was it, you know, me or is that a natural fool? If I'm getting stuck in a halt, um, that could actually be potentially a system flaw and not a flaw just based on my own trading. Um, so there's all those kind of things you need to identify and really break them down to see, is it just you? And if it is just you, then, you know, there's obviously quick fixes you can apply, such as max losses. You could do uh, locking your brokerage. Um, you could, you know, <laughs> I know it sounds extreme, but you could get a friend or hire a risk manager to kind of look over your trades. Um, there are always, you know, the quickest fix, and maybe that won't be achievable for you, but then you can break it down to what is maybe achievable for you right now. Um, and then obviously there's the different approach of what can compound the most. So I think an easy example of this is probably just like, I don't know how to backtest. Uh, I'm going to do my first backtest. I'm probably going to make mistakes, but as I do this, this is going to compound really fast for me because the second I start to get better at backtesting, the better the strategies are, which means the better my trading. Uh, and then that allows you to create more consistent, you know, profitability, hopefully. So there's all those kind of different avenues you can go down. Lastly, be ready for the worst. It is easy to fall into the trap of thinking you have mastered trading after achieving a significant master, such as making it your first $1,000. However, I quickly realized there is always more to learn. It is crucial, crucial to be mentally and practically prepared for the worst case scenarios, such as losing internet connectivity or experiencing unexpected losses. Remember, every unfavorable situation will eventually occur, and that's just basic statistics. These lessons represent my personal experience and insights along my trading journey. It's entirely possible that you have different lessons to share based on your own unique path. Feel free to share them below in the comments, because everyone that has been going through the trading journey, I think, has something valuable to either share to someone that maybe relates to another trader, or just a general piece of thing that they've had to experience and we should be aware of. Um, there are so many random unexpected things that can happen in the market it is always good to have a bigger uh, awareness of all the potential things that could happen or maybe experienced other people so you're prepared for them um so that you you know can actually act on them. one quick example for that is uh, i've personally never experienced it but a trader that i spoke to a while ago uh, experienced getting stuck in a halt just before the end of the day on his system uh, and now I've been able to think about that and, you know, reduce that risk for myself by implementing a way that I wouldn't get stuck in a hole just before the end of uh, day, because those kind of things can really blow up an account or be very stressful. Uh, and that can use your mental co uh, capacity and then you can trade worse because of that. So there's all those kind of small things that you can hear from other people's experiences so that you can catch them before they maybe happen to you. Now, if you want to transform your discretion into black and white stats and actually learn how to properly backtest, I'd really recommend checking out the How to Backtest Bootcamp. 97% of traders don't know how to use and gather data, leaving them of unprofitable strategies. Um, if you click on the link in the description, you can get a free video on how to avoid unprofitable strategies and some kind of basics of backtesting. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, please like, it, like and share it with anyone else who might be interested.